Well, sure. And, and maybe we could start with, you know, uh, how do you keep getting these people angry with you? I mean, I when, when Sam Harris, if you Google Sam Harris, there's going to be all these wonderful moments like the, the Ben Affleck moment and all these other things. You know, I always, you know, I feel like I've got pretty thin skin when it comes to things like Twitter and all those other things. H how do you deal with these situations? And then how do you go back and do them again? I mean, it seems like right. you're, 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 the position you put yourself in is to enjoy that because because you're going to just do it again on the next show. Yes, well, I guess there's a Freudian diagnosis for this. It's called I'm not masochism. going there. I'm just suggesting you might yeah. consider it. Yeah. Um, well, you, you know, I realized at some point that it doesn't bother me to be hated for positions I actually hold. If someone is, understands what I think and they think it's reprehensible and they want nothing more to do with me as a result, that is... I'm fine with. The, the thing that, that gets under my skin and which unfortunately I have to deal with more than anything else is a frank misunderstanding of what my position is or a, just a malicious distortion of it so as to uh, spread a misunderstanding of it. And, and, and I deal with that just more and more now. And, and, and unfortunately, there's, there is no way to deal with it elegantly, uh, comprehensively and uh, and effectively you just you can't keep writing letters to the editor for the re you can't just you can't follow your critics around cleaning up the the mess they're making um, and it is it is much easier to make a mess than to clean it up so I, yes it, wherever you go and you see my views discussed you see, you see just total distortions of them and that's that that does wear on me and I, I you know I've as a result attempted to pick my battles and um, I avoid certain controversies now, frankly, because I I just um, I anticipate the the cost uh, both in terms of time and and um, annoyance, and then just decide it's not worth it. And I actually just gave up a book contract that you know was the best book contract I I ever had, and maybe will will ever have. But I decided the topic was so. Uh, was just going to put me in a in an all front you know 360 degree uh, mode of of fighting critics whose uh, first impulse is to more or less ignore all of the nuance in my argument. So I I have um, I'm 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 being more selective about uh, the kinds of battles I pick now. Although I'm liable to sort of stumble into any area of controversy in, in the middle of a conversation like this and and uh, reap the whirlwind. But it's it is it's annoying. But I I think some of what this conversation would be if we t touch those topics is me distinguishing what I actually mean from what many of these people like Ben Affleck think I mean. Well, and it's funny, too, for those who maybe don't understand, and I've only had the tiniest, tiniest sampling of what you must go through, Sam, but people will point me sometimes to, say, a Reddit page or, or a bulletin board somewhere where they the, the, the headline topic will be, Dan Carlin said blank, is he right? And you'll read what it says you said, and you never said it. But there'll be hundreds of responses of people mm. debating what an idiot you are for saying that, even though you, and, and you don't even know how to begin to correct that element. And you just think, you know, if this continues to proliferate, over time, the internet will be full of stuff that I never said, can't defend, and that people slam me for. So I can only imagine how you get it. And you're dealing with topics that require huge amounts of nuance and, and lots of um, clarifying statements and lots of disclaimers and all that other stuff. And if you just take a piece out of that to sample in a blog, it's really hard to give the overall impression you're trying to convey on any of these subjects. We all have that problem. Yeah. I, and also what I'm dealing with is I'm I'm coming up against certain taboos which are just um kind of amplify misunderstanding. So the taboo around criticizing religion as as opposed to other sets of of ideas uh that is is something that that people are are really uh biased against tolerating. They think there's there's something indecent just as a matter of principle in criticizing people's deeply held religious convictions whereas you there is nothing wrong with criticizing their their false ideas about history or biology or anything else and um there's also the a lot of white guilt and and understandable guilt over the history of slavery and colonialism and and the the just the the sheer uh wealth imbalance between uh, the, the west or the developed nations and the the um developing ones and so a criticism of islam in particular gets mapped onto those concerns about uh, inequalities in our world, and and you get a um, you you get a lot of confusion. It's interesting to look at cases that 
pass through this filter more or less undistorted. So, for instance, for me, the case of North Korea is pre- you get you get pretty perfect convergence from people in the West, you know, liberal or conservative, on the wrongness, the ethical wrongness of the regime in North Korea. And I think more or less everyone would acknowledge that if there was something we could do to liberate the North Korean people without too much bloodshed, we should do it. It's it's a kind of like it's a really it's a hostage crisis. We have we have a, a couple of maniacs or you know, generations now of maniacs with bouffant hair holding millions of people hostage, starving some significant percentage of them, and brainwashing them with an ideology that is um, it just clearly uh, totally out of register with with any real understanding of what's going on in the world. I mean, these people think they're a master race. They th- they're they're essentially a cargo cult armed with nuclear weapons. And um, I think it's a uh, – so if you, if you talk to liberals and conservatives about this, the, the, re- the real problem is just a practical one. There is no way to resolve this hostage crisis without massive loss of life. They have nuclear weapons. That's one problem. But even short of that, they have so much artillery aimed at Seoul that there's no way to do it without mass, without a horrendous war. So, but if we could wave a magic wand and change the situation and and disabuse these people of their their mythology and their 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 intellectual isolation and and uh, cancel that regime, everyone acknowledges that would would be a good thing. And yet, if you try to move that to a a similar consideration of of Islamic theocratic regimes, jihadist regi- regimes, or, or Islamist regimes, uh, things begin to break down under the influence of political correctness. And so I, I just I put that to you as a potential starting point and, and uh, await your words.